Hello, I'm Jean Clark, Public Diplomacy Counselor at the U.S. Embassy here in Tanzania. I'm honored to be here with Ambassador Michael Battle, the U.S. Ambassador to Tanzania, and Ambassador Elsie Kanza, the Tanzanian Ambassador to the United States. This is the first time you've seen each other since the signing ceremony of the commercial dialogue. In your opinion, what does it mean for U.S.-Tanzanian relations? Uh, thank you very much, Jean, and uh, good morning, Ambassador Battle. It's a pleasure to be with you once thank again. You. Uh, the signing of the commercial dialogue uh, marks an important milestone uh, in our relations and in particular underscores um, the importance that the Biden-Harris administration attaches um, to the relationship between the United Republic of Tanzania and the United States of America. Um, and in particular, um, the um, most recent agreement between our two nations is to build on our strong diplomatic relations, um, development relations, and engagement across the board, um, and to have that mirrored with respect to our commercial relationships. And so this is a, an important step because it gives us a formal framework between our two governments um, that can guide us as we uh, work with the private sector to boost trade and investment. And I like to build on what uh, Ambassador Kanza has said. But this agreement provides an opportunity for the U.S. government and the Tanzanian government, for the U.S. private sector and the Tanzanian private sector to work hand in hand in looking at how our two nations can move away over time, not immediately, but over time, away from a relationship that has been marked by aid and development to a relationship that is marked by trade and investment. Because when the relationship is marked by trade and, and uh, investment, it creates a scenario that we are partnering together, that we have shared responsibilities, that we are sharing in each other's hopes and aspirations. That Tanzania has a lot to teach to the U.S., that the U.S. has a lot to teach to Tanzania, and that we're learning with and from each other. And this commercial dialogue provides an opportunity for very high-level U.S. officials and very high-level Tanzanian officials to meet every year face-to-face -face in conversation, and it allows for Ambassador Kansas' office and for my office here to have people working all year round on the kinds of things that will come out of the meetings between the principals. This dialogue puts us in a position, as Ambassador Kanza says, where there's a structure to the relationship and we can concretize things in a much more fluid way because we have a document that, that gives us guidance. Ambassador Kanza, you returned to Tanzania after attending the AGOA 2023 summit. You had the opportunity to meet with government leaders and private sector officials as well. Would you mind sharing with us some of your impressions coming out of that meeting? The first uh, big impression was the turnout, which was very impressive uh, by both um, government officials as well as the private sector. We had organized labor and civil society from the United States of America, as well as from um, African countries that are AGOA eligible. Um, and everyone commented on how impressed they were that for the first time, non-government officials were participating in discussions about AGOA, where we are, and, and how we move forward um, together. Uh, key concern, um, at top of mind right now, is renewal. Um, everyone's calling for an early renewal. Um, we are um, excited and, uh, and pleased as African countries that there is bipartisan support uh, for the renewal of AGOA. Um, it's not clear whether it will be 10 years or up to 20 years. We have positions that have been put forward. Um, still, it's more than 10, which is uh, the position that the um, African trade ministers had arrived at in terms of a renewal. Uh, there's also alignment on the need for improvement. Um, key for everyone is to ensure that we don't push for too much improvement that would slow down uh, the possibility of uh, renewing AGOA next year, which is a preference uh, by the African trade ministers, um, while also noting that there are areas that need to be tweaked. Right? Ten years ago, we did not have the AFCFTA, for example. 
um, 10 years ago, um, digital transformation did not play such a critical role in our economies, and this is something that we need to take into account from a context point of view. And then um, most concerning is the rate of utilization um, and the concern that it has not played the transformative role that was expected um, to have taken place um, over this decade. And therefore, as we look forward, there's a need to also think about how to complement AGOA. And we always uh, try to underscore that AGOA is just one tool, right? It's about trade with Africa. Um, it's also about how we can enhance uh, mutual benefit. So it needs to be beneficial not just for Africans, but also for Americans. This is what will sustain um, the relationship between the continent and, uh, and the United States. And um, in that regard, there were uh, appeals for how to complement uh, the goal when it is renewed um, so that it can deliver the transformation that's, uh, that's anticipated. And uh, this includes things like you know, doubling down on SMEs, particularly those that are run uh, by women and youth, uh, looking at investments. Um, again, uh, AGO is focused on goods and not services, but we've actually seen services play a much more prominent role in African economies as well. Um, you know, how can we incorporate services even as we, we trade goods, right? So build on that area of expertise, there's calls for expansion of products. Um, from the American side, there's also calls for uh, reciprocity, and so that's an area where there will continue to be discussion. Um, to ensure that the African industries uh, can continue uh, to mature and not be at a, at a disadvantage. And so overall, uh, we all came out of the, of the forum uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, very positive, um, real commitment from Ambassador Tai, who was leading the American delegation. Um, it's, it's just very positive. Uh, looking forward to heading back to DC. There were eight ambassadors from DC. We have our marching orders from our ministers and we'll be engaging uh, with our American counterparts both in Congress as well as continue to work with the, with the US government overall um, to see how we can sort of tee things and sort of refine what we have um, for a more successful outcome uh, when we next come to the end of whether it's a 10 year or 20 year horizon. Thank you. Um, Professor Battle, how has AGO benefited the U.S.-Tanzanian relationship, and what would your hopes or expectations be if the legislation is extended? When the legislation is extended, as opposed no, to if, <laughs> right. Uh, President Biden has already indicated uh, very clearly, unambiguously, that he is fully supportive of AGOA. Um, of what AGOA has accomplished, what AGOA is accomplishing, and what his expectations are that AGOA will accomplish over time. And as Ambassador Kanza said, there's a benefit in the fact that both parties in Washington recognize the need for AGOA. Just as a little expansion, I remember a few years ago when I was engaged with working with North African countries and the question of AGOA came up. Now, North African countries don't benefit from AGOA, but one of the things that they said 10 years ago when we were looking at the very first U.S.-Africa Leader Summit was that AGOA is important to all of the continent, even if Northern African countries are not engaged with AGOA because they see the benefit, the potential for AGOA. Americans benefit from AGOA because of the products that are made in, on the continent and that are shipped to the U.S. and that we're able to buy in some of our high-end uh, stores and some of our big box stores as well. So there is a benefit. It creates jobs on both sides of the ocean, jobs uh, here and jobs uh, uh, in the U.S. I agree very much so that there should be an expansion of the number of items that can be included in AGOA, that AGOA should be as long-term as we could possibly make it, because industries that are investing invest for long-term investment and not for short-term investment. So 10, 20 years gives a greater opportunity for industries to plan. In Tanzania, we were in Arusha not too long ago and I visited an apparel uh, a factory where they hired hundreds of, of Tanzanians 
and they were getting ready to hire up to, they said, if AGOA is reauthorized, they were going to hire an additional thousand people because they expected to have an increased load uh, of, 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 of things made for Calvin Klein, for Tommy Hilfiger, and for uh, the children's place, all made here in Tanzania. And interestingly enough, sometimes when you buy a package of, 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 of clothing items in the U.S., if you bother to read, sometimes the label will actually say made in Tanzania. Uh, that's a benefit for both Tanzania and the U.S. Indeed. Indeed. Could you both share from your um, particular country perspective what the next steps are for the commercial dialogue? Let's start with Ambassador yes. Kanza. Well, uh, given that my jurisdiction is in the United States, mm -hmm. Um, I will be meeting uh, with key officials from the Department of Commerce um, in the coming week uh, ahead of uh, Thanksgiving, okay. uh, Thanksgiving break, and we will be uh, reviewing a draft work plan that will actually originate from Tanzania, from Ambassador Battle's uh, team. And uh, the key, what's key for us is to have uh, very clear milestones and to identify um, uh, deliverables, both quick wins as well as those that may take time, but essentially create a roadmap um, that can help us see um, what can be achieved over the coming year um, in the near term, and then you know stretching out to another three to five years because you know real um, transformation takes time. So, for example, you may receive a commitment for investment today uh, in terms of uh, starting the process. And then if you have infrastructure that needs to be put in place, if you have recruitment that needs to take place, actual operations tends to kick in after 12 months, 12 to 18 months. And then you have to start um, uh, actually seeing revenues flow. And so you will really see the impact from investments over a period of time. And the anticipation is that um, our two governments will be receiving feedback from our private sector, so U.S. private sector, Tanzanian private sector, during that period, based on what um, issues, opportunities, and challenges um, that emerge. And so we need to be prepared for um, how we organize ourselves. There's talk of setting up working groups. I believe that is the expectation, um, such that there will be a continuous engagement uh, ahead of the meetings by the Secretary of Commerce and the Minister for Industry and Trade. Um, of Tanzania. And then, um, in addition to that, there's a need to uh, complement uh, these efforts by governments through um, outreach. We've already started speaking to our diaspora, for example, that will also be um, working with our partners. We have an MOU with the US Chamber of Commerce, the Corporate Council on Africa, for instance, and use that one to just um, elevate um, or rather raise visibility um, about this framework and, and other tools um, that they can leverage and um, our anticipation is that this will also help us to uh, mobilize um, additional interest from the private sector um, once they know what's possible and, and what more they can do in, in Tanzania um, or America that they were not aware of or able to do beforehand. Agreement between the CCA and the um, CTI, the agreement between the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, a lot of these different agreements now know for certainty that they have the support of both of our governments. That's why the uh, commercial dialogue was so important. It's one thing when you have private business to private business interacting, or you have an NGO interacting with another NGO, or a Chamber of Commerce from the U.S. and a Chamber of Commerce from Tanzania interacting with each other. It's always the question of to what extent will the governments be supportive of the efforts that are done. For example, regulatory hurdles cannot be overcome by private industry itself alone. They are overcome only when the governments are committed to revising and restructuring uh, regulatory hurdles. But it takes the private industry to be able to advise the government on what those hurdles are and how best to overcome them. So what this agreement does is it placed squarely in the center the Tanzanian government's commitment, 
the United States government commitment that we are going to partner with private industry, with private business groups, with um, local chamber of commerce, state level chamber of commerce, and national chamber of commerce to make this happen. So this makes the partnership much more solid. The fact that we have agreements on the private sector level and now also on the government level. Terrific. Well, we're so appreciative of both of your time today. Um, I give you this question to close with. Where's, where does the future lie for economic partnership between Tanzania and the United States? Ambassador Kansai, welcome your final words. Well, I'm very uh, bullish about um, where our economic partnership can lead to. Um, as you know, uh, Tanzania is uh, sometimes referred to as a sleeping giant and working with the, with the largest or the leading superpower economically uh, in the world. Um, I have no doubt that this will help us uh, to uh, tap into our potential, particularly in the area of natural resources. Uh, but more importantly, um, as we saw the disruptions to global supply chains after the COVID-19 pandemic and with the, uh, the war in, in Europe and um, with other um, changes, climate change included, and disruptions uh, happening around the world, it's really important to build resilience and in global supply chains. And in this regard, um, Tanzania can play a very strategic role uh, in the eastern part of Africa together with, uh, with our neighbors um, to uh, stabilize those, those global supply chains. And therefore, um, I look forward to working with uh, colleagues, again, with the, both within my own government and with the US government. And we have a number of things and, and areas in which we're cooperating uh, to work together really as part of a, of a bigger global context um, as we continue to deepen our bilateral relations. I, I like to give an example of, of, of a new direction in terms of the relationship between the US and Tanzania. The uh, Tumbo Nickel project, for example, is uh, a game changer, has the potential to be a game changer, where nickel would not only be mined from Tanzania, not just extracted, but it would be processed and refined in Tanzania. Tanzanian government owns a, a, a large share of that project. The US, uh, one US company has invested in that project. Australia is invested, uh, European countries are invested. And the new model is that no longer should people come to Tanzania to extract from Tanzania, but value added, in-country value added uh, productivity needs to be present because that creates jobs. It also facilitates Tanzania's own desire to be a middle income status country. It allows Tanzania to occupy the role and space that it can occupy exceedingly well as a hub of industrial development and economic development in East Africa and throughout the rest of the continent. Tanzania is uniquely located on the Indian Ocean corridor, uniquely accessible to the Arab world, to Europe, to uh, the Indian Ocean corridor, to Asia, and now with Tanzania having a Boeing aircraft for uh, cargo, Tanzania opens up the opportunity to trade with all of the world, including the Western Hemisphere, uh, Mexico and the US and Canada. This relationship is going nowhere but up and is going nowhere but strong. And the two of us and our staffs and our governments are gonna do everything we can to make sure that when people think business in East Africa, they think Tanzania and the U.S. as partners. And a partnership, let me add this, a partnership that will not leave Tanzania in debt. You know, a lot of partnerships require uh, front-loading debt obligations. We want to create a scenario that we're not front-loading debt obligations, but we're front-loading 
investment and front-loading infrastructure development and front-loading positive job-creating opportunities as opposed to leaving Tanzania laden with debt for years and years to come.